In an inundated world of technology, efficiency, and logistics, vehicles have just become another tool that sits in the garage until we need it again to get to work or go get groceries or take the kids to practice. But our goal with the driver's decision is to reverse that idea. We believe that every car has an experience of its own. And just like the one behind me, you too can experience something unique. Hey everyone, so Stingray Rob here. I'm a professional race car driver in the Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires Championship. And today, bringing you episode three of the driver's decision. And right behind me, I have the Project FJ40. I'm Alex Moore and I drive a 1974 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40. My favorite thing about um, this rig is honestly the patina on all the body panels. Uh, I just really appreciate the history of these trucks and how long they last and I, as I was rebuilding it I left a lot of the, um, the exposed rust like on the, the bezel and door panels. Um, just it's made of metal, it's tough, it's rugged and uh, it's just all around awesome off-roading vehicle. So one of the challenges of owning this as a daily driver, you know, it doesn't have quite as much horsepower if you've got some of those tough hills to get over. It, it's got the solid axles, which are durable, but not necessarily the smoothest ride. So a few months after um, I originally bought the truck, I uh, had the idea of going out camping with a few buddies. And uh, so we get out into the woods uh, we stopped, for, look out for a camp spot, and uh, we go to turn the, the Land Cruiser back on, and it won't turn over. And uh, of course, we start checking everything we can to see if we can get it running again. No avail. We tow it home. The engine seized, and uh, worst case scenario. And um, so from that point on, I started saving up to uh, rebuild the engine, and one thing led to the next. I started small projects from repairing floor panels to whatnot. I've replaced the whole tub, I've redone the frame, and uh, here we are today. So that one little little uh, unfortunate story turned into rebuilding the whole truck, and uh, I guess I should be grateful for it. But, um, but yeah, it's been a long journey, but it's definitely been rewarding. So some of the features about mine specifically, it's a 74, but it has some parts from other years of trucks that I kind of pieced together to make it my favorite rig. And um, one of those things is like the ambulance doors. This wouldn't have been on a 74, but I just love it. You know, the, the handle right there, you can open it from the inside. And I don't know, there's something cool about that. Um, I also really like the later style tops that have the vented windows um, just to let a little more air come through them. And um, the craziest part about this rig was the tub is actually from a 1975 Australian Land Cruiser um, that I found in phenomenal shape. And um, so you'll notice the tire carrier is actually on the wrong side for an American Land Cruiser. And um, I had to cut and weld the dash and firewall for my original truck to put it on this tub. So it took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears and uh, to make it to where it is today, but I'm really proud of it and uh, I feel like I could take it anywhere. Some of you may be wondering why a race car driver likes a 50 plus year old slow off-road vehicle. Truth is, I had one myself and I've fallen in love with these FJ40s over the last few years just because they're genuine. They're like an old friend that's got rough, tough hands, but always there for you. And there's something that's just different about having an analog versus digital vehicle. 
so many vehicles today you can't even work on because they got too many computers and everything else. Whereas the FJ40, if there's something wrong, just with a couple of screwdrivers and a couple of wrenches, you can fix just about any problem. Putting my hands on the steering wheel reminds me a lot of the last couple years in my own FJ40, and I'm sadly, I got rid of, but uh, it's crazy how just feeling a steering wheel can make you feel, bring back so many memories. You know, you got the, the light toggle switch that's just like the one I had in mine, and the little clicks of the blinker, everything is just so unique to a vehicle like this. It makes it just such an experience. I mean, when you get into one of these vehicles, they have a certain smell. You know, you'll be sitting in a parking garage somewhere and you can hear the ignition turn over and you're like, oh, that's an FJ40. It's kind of funny too, my, my videographer here, awesome, Bryce Vernon, Slough Media, hit him up. He, uh, he saw this rig for the first time and he heard it start up and he goes, it sounds like a tractor. And yeah, it's pretty much a tractor. Modern take, something like that. But it's pretty cool to see a vehicle like this go off road and just kind of step back into history and understand that this was so well made that it's lasted this long. You know, we're talking about 1974. That's over 50 years ago. It's actually not over 50 years ago, is it? 26, 47. Dang. Just short. Almost 50 years. These FJ40s were so well made that it's lasted almost 50 years. And it's pretty cool to see that Alex gets to work on it. You know, it's something to be said about a vehicle that's not just disposable. There aren't plastic pieces all over it that you get to throw away when they crack or break. You know, it's metal. The doors are solid metal, the rooftop solid metal. You got things that you can work on. And that's one of the beautiful things about these rigs is that as a up and coming mechanic or someone that just wants something to work on during the weekend, you got something. And driving one of these is an experience because it's so mechanical, it's analog. You feel like you're part of the vehicle. The bumps on the road are not handled well. Your kidneys hurt after a couple of runs. And we were doing a couple shots today where we'd smack a bump and your head feels like it's bouncing off the ceiling because you launch into the air. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the race car doesn't hold as many people as this, but not by much. Dude, the sound of the window even reminds me of mine. It's so sweet. Like just, well, going up. Ta-da! Some of you may notice, that's my daily driver back there. The 2008 Toyota FJ Cruiser. This is the grandpa to that vehicle back there. And I wanted something that reminded me of the FJ40, but had air conditioning. Air conditioning's nice in the summer when it's 110 degrees out. Um, it had a good heater, had a good windshield wiper, um, and a few other things that, you know, creature comforts that add to the experience of driving a car on a daily basis. It's not quite as cool though. I will say that this 1974 FJ40 is beautiful. So as we've said before, with every vehicle, there's an experience. And that experience has a price and also a few other things that go along with it. Now, in order to rate this vehicle, I think it's kind of hard because it is a 47 year old vehicle that's driving down the road with a inline six cylinder putting out 135 horsepower, but I love it. Absolutely love it. You know, this is one of the, the rigs that you can drive up to a gas station, put it at the pump and people are going to walk up from all kinds of walks of life that want to see what this rig is like. They want to experience it with you. So if I had to rate this rig, I think I'd give it a seven out of 10. Some of you may be saying, well, you just rated the M3 a seven out of 10. Well, here's the reason why. The BMW, it's not gonna go off-road. The things that we did today, you're not gonna be able to see a BMW do, ever, ever. And if you do, it's probably not supposed to be there. It got sent off a cliff in a mud hole. An FJ40 is gonna go anywhere that you want it to. You know, you can take it off-roading, take it in the winter, um, and also you can work on it. The thing with the BMW is you can't work on it. You gotta take it to a special mechanic that is authorized by a BMW dealer. And with an FJ40, you can do oil changes at home. Everything in the engine bay is accessible to whoever wants to work on it. Some cons to this vehicle are, it doesn't get good gas mileage. Alex doesn't even keep track, so I'm pretty sure he doesn't wanna know what he gets. Um, it's old. You know, when it comes to modern technology, cars are comfortable. And this thing, it's fun to drive, but it's not something that you really wanna take out on a date night. You know, one thing that I remember from driving my FJ40 
is I was doing one trip. I was heading to Coeur d'Alene to sell it actually. And it was a cold day and sprinkling a little bit, a little mist on the road. The only problem was I couldn't run my heater and windshield wipers at the same time. And so as I'm driving down the road, I'm doing this jig and trying to figure out if I need the heater right now because I'm freezing my tail end off or if I need the windshield wipers so I can see. And by the time I got to Coeur d'Alene, I just wanted to get rid of the thing because it, it's a job to drive. It, it wasn't some spectacular, luxurious vehicle. Um, it was fun to drive though. And so that's one of the things I love about these is that there, there's nothing like them. You know, there's not too many vehicles that you can get in and understand how it works right away just on a basic mechanical knowledge. Basic. And my buddies and I, we had the top off and they're like, let's go to Dairy Queen. And so we put lawn chairs in the back end, <laughs> just propped them up. And so every time we take a corner, my buddy was just like, Phew. You can't do that. my favorite feature in this whole rig is the jump seats. Check this out. Boom. <laughs> so cool. Thanks for watching another episode of The Driver's Decision. If you haven't already, make sure you follow me on all my social medias at Stingray Rob. And also, if you haven't, like and subscribe this channel and we're going to be sharing more videos with you guys soon.